So the dose of compression is a very important uh, aspect of compression therapy. Uh, until recently, we did not really have means to monitor the dose of compression or even measure the dose of compression uh, in the majority of patients outside the research, uh, true research environment. So uh, most recently, we finally have some technology available uh, for measuring the compression. And fortunately, we have a new sensor that is available in the United States for practical use uh, measuring dose of compression. What we found out by doing so in routine clinical practice that the dose of compression varies substantially from one provider to another, from one patient to another, and over time, especially when pa people, patients wear bandages, not stockings. And that uh, definitely impacts the care, it impacts the outcomes. Uh, as of today, we really don't know uh, what a true appropriate dose of compression is for each category of patients, and that's a future research that uh, we'll have. Now, you ask about new technologies, and I mentioned the, the pressure sensors that are now very practical and, and relatively cheap to use in the routine practice, but the other important uh, development is that we have devices now that maintain compression pressure at the same level over time, which is a big step forward. Now, again, I want to emphasize, we really don't know what level of pressure is optimal for the patient. And uh, a second aspect of that, again, related to new technologies, is that we have devices today that has been approved by FDA, and some of them are still in experimental, that allow patients to adjust the dose of compression to their comfort level, which resolve another uh, important aspect of compression therapy is compliance with that compression therapy. Well, first of all, I, I would like to emphasize that those guidelines that we refer to uh, are focused on the outcomes of intervention and how compression therapy after intervention affect those outcomes. Obviously, we do not have a level one evidence, uh, but we have some strong evidence that suggests that use of compression is recommended for pretty much all the procedures. Uh, that time, how long we need to use a compression after procedures, is a question that we couldn't answer in those guidelines. So it's still open for each individual practitioner to decide. Uh, the guidelines emphasize two factors. One is that we still have pretty low ev level of evidence related to compression therapy in general, and especially the use of compression therapy after the procedures. But the second is that the guidelines are really focused on the outcomes of the procedures. There are other reasons why patients need to use compression therapy sometimes for a long time other than just outcomes of procedures, but to address the disease progression itself. There are a number of studies that are ongoing. There are different design, different questions with the compression. We will see over time what's happened. Uh, as you understand, the unfortunate part of the trials are that when the time when they were initiated, we really didn't have those sensors that I was referring to. Neither we had those devices. So most likely that by the time those studies are finished and published, the results will be applicable to just a fragment of the population. So definitely we need something new that uh, probably will be initiated in the next couple of years.